Let's get started. Um, hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, welcome to our next episode of the Yoga by DB Friday Tech Talks for engineers, by engineers. And I'm Kannan Muthukarupan, one of the co-founders at Yoga Byte. And it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Karthik Ramanathan <clears throat> for today's episode. So Karthik, it would be wonderful if you could give a short intro about yourself and then uh, jump into the topic. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Kannan. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Karthik Ramanathan. I work on query execution and observability here at Yugabyte, and I'm based out of Sunnyvale, California, which is where I'm presenting from. So today's talk is going to be on explain analyze for distributed query execution. And I'm thrilled to be talking about this today at YFKT. So let's get started. All right, so let's talk about the tool or the invention that's been hailed as the best thing since life spread. On, on today's agenda, uh, we'll talk about the very popular explain command. We'll take a deep dive into it. We'll talk about specific options that Yugabyte has introduced to, to better diagnose query execution, and that's the dist option. We'll talk about uh, what the dist option tells us over and above explain and why it is useful and how you could be using it. And finally, we'll take a peek under the hood to see how this all comes together within Yugabyte DB. So uh, in, in, in terms of the motivation for today's talk, uh, it, it's all about how you can use the tools that are available to you to better understand query execution within Yugabyte DB and about how explain the tool that we're interested in particular for today can help you write or rather uh, fine tune your queries so that they run faster with the resources that you have at your disposal. Okay, so uh, the uh, explain command simply put uh, describes how the database system or how the query layer plans to run your query so the explain command shows the execution plan of a query. That is, if you are planning, to, uh, if you issue a read request and uh, it tells you how it is planning to scan through the data, whether it's going to be a sequential scan, an index scan, and if you're planning to, if it, the query needs a join, what kind of a join the, uh, is going to be done in order to execute the query. So a query goes through multiple phases uh, in its journey from uh, the time the user sends the query to the database system till the time the user gets back the data. This includes parsing, rewriting, planning, and execution of the query to break it down into big buckets. So uh, the explain command does everything but execute the query. The query is parsed, it is rewritten, it is optimized and it is planned. And at the end of the plan, the uh, explain command shows you, tells you what the plan is, or it describes what the execution plan to the query is going to be. The analyze is an option that you can provide to the explain command, and this takes it one step further. This goes ahead and executes the query based on the plan that had been uh, supplied. And it then tells you a bunch, it gives you a bunch of runtime statistics based on the actual execution. So this could include things like uh, the execution time, the rows returned, and so on. So while this works pretty well for standalone Postgres where you're probably working on a single node uh, system. Uh, when you look at a, when you come to a system that's on the scale of Yugabyte that uh, has distributed query execution, uh, to, to better understand the queries, you need something more. Uh, and that's exactly precisely what the dist option provides uh, in addition to the explain and analyze. So the dist is a Boolean flag that can be turned on and off uh, when explain an when analyze is enabled, and the dist option uh, displays distributed execution statistics about the query 
from a Yugabyte perspective. That is, this is how the uh, how Yugabyte's query layer views the uh, query execution as it's happening through the system. So we will be walking through a whole bunch of examples today to illustrate the explain and like this command. And for all of these examples, we will be referring to a common setup. Uh, so this is a, an RS3 cluster with three tablet servers. So I have tablet servers one, two, and three. And on this, I've uh, created two tables, foo and bar. Each of these tables have a, a, a hash index primary key and a value column, which does not have any indexes on it. And in both of these cases, I've inserted 10,000 rows into these tables. So what the diagram on screen is showing you is that there are three tablet servers and the data that's held in foo and the data that's held in bar is sharded into six different tablets and equally distributed amongst the three tablet servers. So for foo, uh, tablet server one has two tablets, tablet server two leads two tablets, tablet server three leads two tablets, and so on. I think there's uh, just a typo, uh, Karthik, where uh, the, the lower foo, there's a bar and foo, both should have been bar. Yes, uh, I'm just realizing that's a typo. That should have been bar. So everything no. in purple is bar and everything in orange is. Got it. So uh, the, let, let us look at, uh, take a sample query. Uh, so this is what, the, uh, let me see if I can enable a pointer. Perfect. So, uh, this is what the table foo looks like, uh, 10,000 rows of H and V and 10,000 rows of H and V for bar. Let us try a sample query where we join the foo.v column with the bar.v column to produce a result like so. And we'll, as we walk through the explain analyze command, we will see how each piece fits into this puzzle and how we are actually able to understand uh, how query execution works here. So uh, as I mentioned before, the explain command uh, describes the execution plan for a given query. And uh, the query that we have is a simple nested loop join, which joins foo.v and bar.v uh, on the key, uh, on, on the column foo.v is equal to bar.v. So uh, the output from explain looks uh, something like this. So first off, it tells you uh, a description of the plan node about how it plans to execute the query. So since we requested for a nested loop join uh, between the tables foo and bar, uh, that's what it plans to do. And uh, you can think of nested loop join as a nested for loop where the outer table or the outer for loop is on foo and the inner for loop is on bar. And this essentially says that uh, both the outer for loop and the inner for loop are gonna be executed as type sequential scan. Secondly, uh, the explain, uh, as we mentioned, uh, the query has not yet been executed uh, when you run the explain command. And so all the numbers that you see here are estimates that the planner thinks is appropriate for the given query. So for example, we know that the query contain, each of the two rows contain, sorry, each of the two uh, tables contain 10,000 rows, but the uh, planner assumes, or uh, the planner estimates that the table bar contains a thousand and the join operation contains 5,000. Uh, the third piece of information that uh, explain tells you is about the cost of running the query. The cost here is expressed in arbitrary units and the two numbers that you see on screen are the startup cost and the total cost. The number on the left is the startup cost and the number on the right is the total cost. And the startup cost 
simply put is how long the planner thinks it's going to take to fetch a single row versus the total cost, which is how long it takes to fetch all the rows requested by the plan node here. The final bit of information uh, that you see on screen is the width, which tells you the size in bytes of the of each row of the result returned by the plan node. So in case of the sequential scan, we are returning a single integer of four bytes. In case of the join, we're joining together two columns of type integer, so that's eight bytes. And uh, as a small note here, uh, the costs are in arbitrary units. So uh, all that you need to know is that small is good, large is probably not good. So let's talk a little bit about what Analyze add, brings to the table in, in terms of observability. So we again have the same query uh, and Analyze goes ahead and runs the query. So uh, first off, you can see that it tells you that it takes about half a millisecond to plan the query and about 12.5 seconds to execute the entire query, which is a join on 10,000 rows. Uh, the additional bit of information that Analyze brings to the table is that it tells you the actual cost of running the query in arbitrary uh, in the in units of milliseconds, the actual number of rows returned, and how many times it needed to execute the uh, access method associated with the plan node in order to fetch the data. So in this example, uh, we, we see that uh, it took about 10 milliseconds to fetch the first row of bar, about 15 milliseconds to fetch the first row of foo, and about 39 milliseconds for the result to bubble up to the nested loop plan node. And all of these were executed in a single shot or in a single iteration, so to speak. Uh, they each had 10,000 rows, and the resulting set has also 10,000 rows. This is good, but uh, in a distributed system, this doesn't really solve the problem of telling you why is it taking 12.5 seconds when it's just 10,000 rows, or of uh, how this is, uh, the query layer is executing your query uh, when you have multiple distributed nodes. And that's where this comes into the picture. So this is an option that Yugabyte has introduced to better diagnose your queries uh, uh, for explain analyze. So this is a Boolean option similar to analyze, and this intends to display distributed execution statistics. Uh, so first off, uh, we, we see that the summary of the uh, execution plan or the query plan has been augmented with a series of statistics. So in addition to 12, uh, the execution time being 12.5 milliseconds, which is returned by Analyze, we see a new field which says that it took uh, the storage layer only about 78 milliseconds to return the entire query, to return the entire data to the query layer. That's, it, it, that's interesting. Uh, and we see that this entire, the entire time in the storage layer was spent in performing grades. Diving a little deeper, uh, we see that uh, this is executed as table read request. Uh, or user table read request. So a request is essentially one round trip to uh, to the storage layer. And uh, similarly for the table bar. So for the table foo, it took about 12 round trips to fetch all the data back from across the tablet to bubble it up into a materialized uh, node. And similarly for the table foo. So at this point, uh, the query layer had everything in memory uh, at about, uh, let's say, 68 milliseconds. And 
between 68 milliseconds and 12,500 milliseconds, the time is spent in the query layer in probably uh, removing all the extra rows that were generated from the uh, result set. So that gives you an idea in, in terms of what the query is doing and also an idea in terms of what we could do better to fine tune this query. So uh, let's kick this up a notch and let's see if uh, we can make this query run faster. But before that, uh, the two things that I want to point out about explain analyze this is that it tells you how the query is being executed in terms of lookups to the storage layer in terms of uh, uh, read uh, what kinds of requests are being sent and also in terms of where the query is spending most of its time in the execution. In the previous example, we saw that it took about 12.5 uh, milliseconds to execute this query with the bulk of it in the query layer. Uh, not milliseconds, seconds you mean. Oh, sorry, yeah. my bad, seconds. Uh, so with this knowledge, let's see if we can improve this nested loop chain to make it run faster. So let's come back to uh, our original schema, our original setup and understand where the 12 read requests for foo and bar are coming from. So uh, this is another view of the same three target servers that we saw earlier and uh, we we uh, we recollect that Fu had six tablets, Bar had six tablets, and uh, we essentially see that it takes about two round trip requests to fetch all the data that is stored from a single tablet. Given that each tablet roughly stores about ten thousand rows divided by six worth of data, so uh, six times two requests. Uh, which is 12 requests are needed to fetch all the data from foo, six times two for var, and that's where we get the 12 plus 12 read requests from. Okay, uh, how about adding an index to make this run faster? So let's add a range index uh, to var on the column V. And we, we see that uh, a tablet for uh, this range index has been created in one of the tablet servers. And let's look at how the query execution now plays out differently for the same exact same query running explain analyze this time. So, um, so Karthik, we'll take one question that has come in. Uh, so the question was, is it reasonable to think of storage read requests as the number of RPCs? Yes, uh, you can think of it as the number of read request, uh, the number of RPCs between the storage, between the query layer and the storage layer. Correct. And I think the follow up, which is, is also like, so since there were 12 requests per table, that's about four per node. Uh, so, yeah. Give, yeah, in this, yeah, we do, you know, Yogabyte does balance usually the tables fairly uniformly across the nodes. So it is true. Right. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, to recap, we've added a range index to uh, the table bar on the column B. And uh, straight out the bat, we see that the execution time has been cut in half. It's about 5.5 seconds or 5,500 milliseconds with a bulk of the time being spent in the storage layer. Uh, and if we look a little deeper in, into this, uh, we, we see that uh, the nature of the execution plan has changed. We no longer have the materialized node. Instead, it, the seek scan on bar has been replaced by an index-only scan, meaning to say that we are indeed using the index that we created. But that also comes with the additional cost that for every row that we fetch on foo, uh, we need to go do a point lookup on the index, on the bar V range index. So 
uh, we do an average of one lookup uh, about uh, about ten thousand uh, across ten thousand iterations to fetch all the data from bar, which I would say is consistent with our expectations here. Fundamentally, what's going on here is you're kind of converted a n squared algorithm into n times like log n, if I'm not mistaken, basically for the outer loop, if it has n entries, you're looking up each of those entries in the other table now, because you, you have an equality predicate and you have an index on it. Uh, and that's why sort of it's like dramatically improving. Uh, but we're still making, uh, although it says storage request is uh, uh, one above, but the bottom it's 10,000 because of the loop, we are looking doing this one storage request on the index 10,000 times, yeah. So uh, Postgres, which is where we borrow our conventions from, has this convention that anything inside a plan node is averaged across all the loops. So this is meant to be read as one request uh, per iteration for 10,000 iterations, giving us a total of 10,000 plus 12 times one. Yeah, makes sense. So let's kick this up a notch further. We went from 12 seconds to about 5.5 seconds, but I think we can do better here. So uh, Yugabyte has a batched nested loop uh, join exec uh, operator or an execution node where uh, we no longer fetch requests or uh, no longer do lookups one at a time. We batch the loop, we batch the number of lookups. So hopefully this should dramatically bring down the time. So what we are seeing here is that we are setting a batch size of 10, meaning to say that if we were to fetch 10,000 rows, uh, we would have to do it in, across 10 batches. And uh, it, it, so, Immediately, we see that the execution time has dropped from about 5.5 seconds to 400 milliseconds. And the storage read execution time has also seen a corresponding drop here. So uh, to quickly summarize what's happening here is that uh, we still require 12 uh, seek scan read requests to unload all the data that's present in foo. And now this is held in memory in the query layer. And this is batched into 10 batches of 1,000 rows each and pushed down as an index as an index scan to the storage layer, which then returns 10,000, sorry, 1,000 rows per batch uh, with the uh, filter, with the filter as follows. Yeah, maybe the only uh, clarification I would do. Uh... I don't think we hold all of uh, the outer table foo in this case in memory. We still do paginated fetches uh, because you know you can you can keep discarding the rows you've already seen. So just a small query, yeah. right? Because because this uh, this outer table could be terabytes big, so we don't need to hold it in memory. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, so we we see that batching has touch down both the number of requests, the number of requests and the time taken to execute them. And as a result, the query is pretty fast. So let's recap in terms of uh, what explain analyze this has been telling us. So in terms, in terms of how the query is being executed, it tells us the number of round trip requests made between the query layer and the storage layer about whether they are made to user table, secondary indexes, or to the system catalog. And it provides some sort of an insight in, into whether this is being executed in serial or in parallel. So let's jump uh, into a quick example here to understand uh, serial versus parallel execution and about how explain analyze can be used to indicate this. So uh, we replace the range index with a hash index on the table bar, and we do a simple lookup uh, to fetch uh, rows corresponding to certain values in B. 
So the special thing about these values is that they fall into different shards on the or different tablets on the secondary index and on different tablets on the main bar table. So uh, we, we, we see that a single, uh, this is executed using an index scan, meaning to say that to execute the request, the query layer has to, 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 to do a lookup on the secondary index, come back uh, with the data, do a lookup on the uh, primary table. And this, this is further optimized in case of co-located scenarios, but with uh, our RS3 non-co-located three tablet servers, this is going to require this many number of requests. So we see that instantly all of the index data is fetched in a single round trip, implying that in the storage layer, it happens in parallel. Uh, so this, the point of view that you're being here is from the perspective of the query layer. So from the perspective of the query layer, it needs a single round trip to fetch the index data corresponding to all three rows, but it needs three storage table, table read requests to fetch the, uh, the, to return the actual rows corresponding to the uh, rows returned by the secondary index. So to summarize, the index reads uh, appear to happen in parallel and the table reads appear to happen serially. So uh, we saw, we took a look at how the query is being executed with the help of the disk option. Uh, but the disk option also tells us where the query spends most of its time in execution. So in the uh, nested loop and batch nested loop giant example, we saw a breakdown of the time spent by the query in the query layer versus the time spent in fetching the data across the network from the storage layer. The first nine queries spent most of its time in the query layer and uh, subsequent requests spent a larger portion of the time doing the actual heavy thing of pulling out the data. And uh, this, this might not have been apparent, but it is uh, the execution plan also tells us where the data is actually being filtered uh, out. And uh, the, the important implica the implication here is that uh, if the data filtering happens at the storage layer, we need fewer round trips to fetch the data and consequently it's faster. So let's look at an example of this to better understand this point. Uh, so I have a time series table where I have a primary key on a column time of time of type timestamp with a value associated with it. So I want to run a query which returns to me all the rows that were inserted into the table in the last one day. So uh, naively, if I were to run a query which says uh, select uh, all, all columns from time series, where the time range is bit or the time interval is between now and the last one day. We see that uh, this requires six table, sorry, this requires six uh, round trips to the storage layer. But if I were to replace this with a static date or a fixed value for the date, uh, I now require only a single table read to fetch all the data. So uh, this essentially boils down to the way the now function is treated by our query layer and also by Postgres. So now is termed as a volatile function, which means that it can, it is subject to change and assumptions, certain assumptions cannot be made about its value. So the way this request on the left would actually work is that all rows are fetched for the time series table and filtered on the query layer against the evaluation of now. That is on the right, we are able to push down the filter to the storage layer and thus 
we are able to eliminate the hassle of going back and forth without by filtering out the data and the storage layer. Yeah, and that and that shows up as the remote filter um, tag, which is basically pushing the filter to the storage. Uh, yeah, there was one more question, uh, Karthik, on the intuition around serial versus parallel execution, which is like if the query layer fires one storage read request, how do you derive the fact that there is actually parallel work going on? I think it's a fair question. I don't think it's it's super obvious. It in, a, in this case, you knew that there are it was hash partition and there were six, these, these keys you were looking at fell on three different tablets. And so, and yet it made only one request to the index. So there's a little bit of like under the hood reasoning needed, uh, but I think that is feedback we should take into account and probably try to make it more clear that it's one uh, read request, but underneath the curves, maybe there are like three parallel requests or something like that. Absolutely. And uh, we do have an example of this coming up next where we show some notion of this, for, particularly for write requests, but for reads, it's still, I think, a little bit of a, a, a hidden notion in terms of yeah. why is some, it some extra like reasoning it. needed and it's not super obvious yet. Right. So let's quickly look at one such example. Uh, I think it nicely segues into this example. Uh, so explain analyze this does something similar for write requests as well. So uh, the context here is that we have a table foobar, uh, which has a primary index and two secondary indexes. And we, the query on the left inserts a single row while the query on the right inserts three rows uh, as part of a single query. So uh, logically, this would require one trip to... Uh, so reads and writes happen slightly differently in Yugabyte. And logically, uh, this would require one write to the primary table per row and one write each for each of the secondary indexes per row. So uh, the query on the left would need one main table write and two secondary index writes. Uh, the table, the query on the right would need batch times three essentially. But in Yugabyte DB, uh, we buffer write requests and we flush them all at once so that we can minimize the amount of work that is being done uh, in going back and forth between the query and the storage layer. So the example here shows that uh, for both inserting a single row as well as inserting three rows, uh, we perform this as a single write flush, which is a write request, which is a write RPC made from the query layer to the storage layer. So uh, slight convention difference here, the read requests indicated uh, an RPC round trip, whereas in case of the writes, this uh, tells you the number of logical operations to be performed and the flush actually tells you how, uh, how many RPCs or network hops are required to perform this operation. And that's probably why uh, the, um, for the write request, we don't display the time. It's sort of asynchronously fired off but if you look at the storage flush request, we, we say how much time it took and so on, because we were waiting for those previously fired requests to complete. Yeah. Absolutely. We are, yeah, we are a little bit uh, over time. Uh, so we probably the under the hood portion, I don't know, you, you can make a call if you can go really quick in a couple of minutes or we can uh, punt. Sure, uh, I'll quickly breeze through it in a couple sure. of minutes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, in a nutshell, uh, the way this works under the hood is that Yugabyte collects distributed execution statistics throughout the lifetime of a connection or throughout the lifetime of a backend session. So uh, uh, if uh, you had a query plan like so, where you had three nodes, like the example that we saw previously with one top level node and two leaf nodes, each of these nodes pass through the query layer to make data fetch requests from the storage layer. And as the data streams in from the storage layer, the query layer collects statistics about it and constantly updates 
a session level statistics object. So to run through a very quick academic example, it's the same example from before with, with the caveat that we are now collecting only a hundred rows. And if we assume that 10 rows are collected per read request, it gives us a pattern something like this. So we start off with the session being alive for a while. So we see that some statistics have already been collected. The query execution for nested loop uh, goes as follows. Uh, from the nested loop op uh, operator, it comes down to this outer table peak scan on true. We fetch 10 rows with a single read. Uh, we then go into uh, perform the index on the scan on bar, which is a point lookup. And this goes once for each of the rows that we had just read from foo. So this happens 10 times uh, to the first iteration on foo, and that's we get 10 index read requests. The value is obtained, and as Kanan mentioned earlier, uh, we don't hold everything in memory. So we fetch the intermediate result, bubble it up to the nested loop node, and then discard the rest. Second iteration, similar story, we fetch rows from 10 to 19, increment the table reads, uh, perform a similar operation for the index only scan on bar, in, uh, giving us a total of 20 reads, and then bubble it up to the nested loop mode. So uh, in total, we see that this runs 10 times, giving us 10 table reads, 100 index reads and uh, none for the nested loop upper, uh, for the nested loop node. So this is just a summary of that. I'm going to skip through that. And uh, to conclude this talk, just wanted to quickly highlight uh, uh, the different tools in the Yugabyte ecosystem that can be helpful in debugging queries. So explain or explain analyze this is. Uh, really meant to be uh, used as a first level of debugging for slow queries. It helps you understand how query execution actually works in case of that query. But it also comes with a performance overhead associated with it. So if you were diagnosing performance problems in a loaded system, this might not be the best tool to be used in such a case. But again, it tells you exactly how a query is going to be executed. Auto explain is a Postgres extension that we brought into the Yugabyte ecosystem that helps auto log uh, explain plans for slow queries. So that uh, throughout the run of uh, a workload, you can see the queries that are running slow and how it is that they are actually running. But in addition to this, we also have a series of uh, tables and views that report server activity, query layer activity, which Postgres calls collectively as the cumulative statistics system. So an example of this would be PG stat activity, which shows you the current activity of running backends or of running connections. While not technically a part of the uh, statistics system, PG stat statements is something that's been developed in a similar vein. And this tracks planning and execution stats uh, on a per query level. And this is, again, something that you can use to get a better picture of uh, query layer activity in a system. But stay tuned on this uh, for a future YFGT talk. Uh, in, in terms of future work, uh, we also plan to have a lot more storage layer stats being made available. Uh, as part of explain analyze this. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. Yeah, just like Postgres exposes a wide variety of internal metrics like buffer cache feeds and so on. Uh, we have similar plans to extend PG stat statements as well as explain analyze to show a variety of storage layer metrics like block cache misses, number of seek or next operations and so on. So um, yeah. Uh, one important question that I forgot to ask earlier, Karthik, like, so this dist option that is added to explain, analyze, which release can our users uh, expect to find it in? Um, I, it, it is available as part of 
two nineteen one onwards is what I'm understanding, and okay. I I also believe it's available as part of the later two eighteen releases. I think from two eighteen two, two. two eighteen two or something. Yeah. Okay. So fairly recent uh, enhancements, uh, we could say. Yeah. Great. Uh, we are uh, well over time. So uh, uh, no, that was an excellent uh, talk, Karthik. Thank you very much for. Uh, covering this topic today. And uh, thanks to all those in the audience who are uh, joining in. Um, uh, yeah, see you on another such talk next Friday. Uh, Karthik, over to you as well for closing comments. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Kanan. Absolutely loved presenting today and hope to see you all in a future YFTP talk. Thank you so much. All right, see you all. Thank you.